So I have with me Prachi Nagpal. So let's move on into our questions. How did you work towards spreading awareness for type 1 diabetes? So after I was diagnosed nine years back, it actually took me a lot of time to come out of my shell. But in the year 2020, during the pandemic, when I realized that this is something that is happening to children but is not being spoken about, I first started using my social media, although I don't have a lot of followers. But I thought if I can just change somebody's life, then I think that would bring about that difference. Post which I started going to government schools because I realized that it's people in these rural areas and people in backward areas that do not have information or access to what exactly is type 1 diabetes or what can be done. And last year is when I had the honor of joining my hands with the WHO, which has been tremendous help because WHO is somebody that actually has the most amount of resources and information. And through them, even I learned a lot more and I'm still continuing to work with government schools. That's actually brilliant. I mean, that's impressive. I feel inspired to some extent listening to that answer. Thank you. So let's move on to, you know, taking from your answer, of course. How can we as a society be more inclusive or empathetic towards people suffering from chronic diseases? So I think some, as somebody who has a chronic condition, the first thing that you can do is to have acceptance. A lot of times I've seen this not just towards me, but towards a lot of people that have even visible chronic conditions, that people are not very accepting of who we are. They want to name us, they want to label us, and that is how you can make that first step. The second would be to be able to understand that for us, the limit does not exist. And this is something that I tell each and every person that I come across, that if I can do this, then anybody with a chronic condition can actually do what they set their heart out at. That is lovely. So if ignorance is bliss, why do we seek knowledge? I think when it comes to knowledge, we all have a different perspective of what exactly knowledge could be. Mm -hmm. For some, knowledge comes out of experience and for some, it comes out of education. But why we ignore things is also because we've been taught, as especially Indians, that ek kaan se suno or ek kaan se nikalo because sometimes, more than ignorance, I feel, silence can be the greatest answer to a situation that can sometimes put you in trouble. But also, half knowledge is very dangerous. So in those senses, silence and ignorance can be your best way. Okay, so good. I mean, it's either be fully read or you just observe, right? Absolutely. Right. So what makes you stand out from the other girls competing today? I mean, apart from having type 1 diabetes, I think <laughs> I would say um, what really sets me apart is that I've been patient and I've had gratitude towards not just my own life, but towards for people who've been around me, supported me, because my journey has not been just this last few months or a year. I've been a part of this for the last seven years. So it's been a lot of patience, a lot of gratitude, and just a lot of willingness to be wanting to coming back. Because with every failure that I've had in life, I didn't want to give up. Because I realized that this is my calling. And if I'm not going to do this, then I don't think I'm going to be in that bed when I'm 80 years old or more, I do not know, with a smile on my face. That is great. It was a lovely chat. And Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you so much.